Um, yeah, I want to um, I want to go through some of the balancing procedure for vector balancing this morning. I made a, a PowerPoint using um, some polar graph paper and, and some examples that I've got. Um, to do this, um, you would have to have this polar graph paper that you're going to use that I printed off a whole bunch of them in the shop, um, in the balancing room there. And uh, Matt and Carter already got a jump on this. They're going to train up the next group on Monday, so apologize to you guys. This will just be review for you. Well, it's review for everybody because I covered it in the video. Um, but basically, I want to just walk through the um, vector balancing procedure fully. And then um, <clears throat> have you guys hopefully have you guys drop a pin on the polar graph paper using that poll EV um, app on your phone and, and guess what what location we're going to add the trial weight. But I don't know if it'll work or not. We'll just have to try it and uh, see. I'm uh, I'm on the uh, bleeding edge of technology here and I haven't tried it out, so. Um, we'll have to see what uh, what happens. So, um, when I share my screen, okay. Just bear with me here, guys. Go into presenter mode. Ah, oh, perfect. It worked. Okay, so I guess I'm guessing you guys can see that. Okay, um, my PowerPoint here. Um, if not, let me know. But uh, you know what I say? Yeah, we see it. It's okay. Um, so yeah, I'm going to um, basically um, go over the entire procedure, and it's all in your balancing book. Um, wherever mine went to right here. So that was one of your assignments was to go in here and make up your cheat sheet of all the different uh, steps that you're going to be um, going through when you do this vector balancing. Um, and there's a few things, but I think it's just good to just walk through and, and kind of play it out, not the example in the book, but just kind of go through it um, with a new example. So the steps here are to measure the original imbalance. Uh, then we're going to install a, a mythical trial weight that I'm just going to throw the number out. Then we're going to measure the lengths of the vectors and then do a calculation and then um, kind of imaginary measuring of angles uh, decide on where we're going to place this weight. OK, so the first step that we want to do in this um, is Put the accelerometer on the bearings or on your if it's in place put it on the bearings if it's on a soft balancing rig you you mount it on the on the pedestal and then you're going to run it up so running up when you say run it up it means bring it up to speed turn it on um on the, the other soft balancing rig where we're going to do two plane there's a um a vfd drive where we can actually set the rpm to kind of slow um, and and bring it up to speed. So when you're first starting out and you're first doing a balance on um, like the goal of, of all these balancing exercises is that you want to bring it up to full speed and then get a full final measurement at at full speed, which is usually the, the, the name of the game when you're balancing in place. But if you're balancing in the shop and you have something that you don't know what what the heck's going to happen, um, you don't start and just turn it on and just go crank it right up to 1800 RPM. You start with a low, um, a low imbalance or a low RPM, low CPM, and then balance that out. And then you raise the, the speed a little bit more once you've kind of got that initial balancing because you don't want this thing just it, it, they can fly right off the off the stand. So um, the first one, first step that you're going to do is when you turn on the um, the balancer, you're going to read a um, an initial amplitude and in our example our initial amplitude when we turned on our machine um, in this example is it gave us a reading of 2.9 mils displacement at 10 degrees and when i say at 10 degrees what that would look like is um, 
we mount our accelerometer. Can you guys see me right now or just the screen? I can see you on the bottom there. Just okay, the okay. Line. Good, okay. I just want to make sure that um, I'm not like showing this to a, a camera that nobody can see. So if this is where I'm mounting the accelerometer, right now this is where the strobe light is going to go off. It's going to measure this imbalance as it hits the inline or in phase with how where we've mounted the accelerometer and then the light's going to flash. So when I say 10 degrees, what it means is that this would be a phase angle of zero degrees, but our arrow on the end of our shaft is slightly rotated to about 10 degrees, right? This is an arbitrary um, arrow that we've got on the end of the shaft. So the strobe light's going to flash, and right now we're at 10 degrees, and the amount of imbalance that we're measuring, it's not a little bit of imbalance, it's not a lot of imbalance, it's 2.9 mils. That's the amplitude of the vibration measurement that we've picked up. So we got 2.9 mils at um, our 10 degrees. So the next thing we have to do is we have to plot that. So you take a ruler and a pencil, and starting from the center, we have to um, use this graph paper to decide on our um, units. So for this, you can see that there's these kind of more defined rings as it goes around, and then in between the more defined lines, there's these little hashes. So what I decided to do was say, okay, this is half a mil, this is one mil, this is one and a half mil, this is two, right? So each one of these units on this polar graph paper is 0.1 mil. So this is one mil, two mil, three mil. And if we come around at 10 degrees, we're at 2.9, and I'm a little bit off because I was doing it with a with a mouse and, and you guys would be more accurate with this. But coming from the center location at 10 degrees out, we have a measurement of 2.9 mils displacement. So if this was like, let's say we had a displacement of 20, of 20 mils at 10 degrees, then we could change the scale of this paper to be like, you know, 5, 10, 15, 20. And maybe that line would only, even though we had a higher reading, you have to pick the scale that you're going to use. And if you can see in the little, there's little boxes here that where you can actually kind of choose and select the scale um, that you want. So once you have this measurement, okay, 2.9, you have to decide on a scale that you're going to use, how much each one of these increments is going to use, going to account for, and then we're going to, um, and then we're going to mark that line out. It don't give us a, a standard because it could be a displacement of 40 mils at, you know, two degrees, or maybe your first original run is, um, you know, three at 10 degrees, and then you add your trial weight, and then your next vector is going to be like off the chart. Like maybe your next one is like an amplitude of, um, you know, 25 at, um, you know, some other some other angle. So you're going to go like off the chart completely. So choosing the scale is really important. You want to choose a scale so that um, you're somewhere in the ballpark of the middle of this grid. You don't want to be out on the outside edge because if after you do your trial weight, if the next vector um, your T plus your O is you don't want it to be outside. So you kind of want to just split the difference and be somewhere in the middle. So this is a good example for that. Um, so once we have that, we're going to next thing we're going to do is we're going to install. Um, so we ran up the the rotor and we measured it. And that's what we got 2.9 at 10 degrees. Then what we're going to do is we're going to add a trial weight. And that's a, that's the subject of the video this week is just a short 10 minute video on how to actually calculate out the trial weight size that you would want based on the size of the machine and the speed of the machine and everything. But I'm just giving you the trial weights in these examples. So in this case, we installed a trial weight of 0.8 ounces at 180 degrees. And then we're going to turn turn it on and run it again. So, so there's two things. First, we mounted the trial weight at 180 degree phase. So if we're looking at this, right, our that's our zero degree. This is where the imbalance is. We actually mounted the, if this was a disc and a rotor, we actually mounted our trial weight at not, not 180 degrees um, from the imbalance. We're measuring a 180 degree phase angle relative to our arbitrary kind of line that's on the front of our of our rotor. 
okay? So when we turn that on and then we give that a spin, we run this up, okay? What our next vector that we're going to read. So basically we had an original imbalance. Now we're adding a trial weight on there and we're trying to connect uh, some type of relationship between the phase and the angle, uh, the phase angle and the amplitude to um, how much imbalance. We're trying to figure out like how much imbalance this is. So we're putting something on there and then we're seeing what it does. And what it did in this example is we had a, um, a trial T plus O. So this orange vector here is T plus O. So that's our trial weight and our original imbalance. And that one gives us a new vector of four mils of amplitude at 200 degrees. And that's what I've drawn in here. So you can see three, three and a half, four. So we're right on this outside edge here from the center. This is going to be after we've added our trial weight. That's what um, the new um, the new vector is. So original was here. We added the trial weight at 180 degrees. Then we turned it on, and now our new imbalance is at 200 degrees. So we have a 200 degrees um, four mils of um, of imbalance. Is that making sense so far, guys? Does anybody have any questions? I can't see the chat, so you're going to have to pipe up. I've got a. I don't know, maybe I can. No, it's good so far. Is that making sense? Yep. Okay. Um, okay, so the next step that we got to do is to. Um, connect the ends of these, the, the tips of these vectors. So we're going to. Um, oh shit. We're going to take this this end here, and we're connecting this with the line. But we're starting at the tip of O, our original imbalance, and then we're finding out how much of a difference that trial weight made from our original imbalance. So if our original balance was pointing up at 10 degrees, now we're pointing down at 200. This vector tells us how much of a change this trial weight that we mounted at 180 degrees makes. And um, so the, the big step here is that we, we know that this is uh, 2.9 amplitude we know that this vector here is a four amplitude so what we actually have to do is we have to say okay we have to grab a ruler and we have to say um, literally with our ruler um, if this from this point here up to this point here is 2.9 and we measure it and we say that it's um, you know 2.9 centimeters that means that each millimeter is 0 0.1 of a of a mil um, so it'd be like to scale. So you actually have to measure it and find out exactly how long these vectors are versus the actual amplitude that they're representing. Same with this one. And then when you measure this uh, T from here to here with a ruler, you can know exactly how many mils of amplitude that the new T vector is actually representing. And in this case, we, we got 6.5. Now I'm a little bit um challenged because i'm doing this on on a powerpoint um so i i would probably show you this in in person with an actual ruler and be like measuring this these papers out and, and all that but i don't have that um the ability to do that so um so anyways so that's so that's what we figured out is okay so our trial weight of 0.8 ounces at 80 degrees um gave us that measurement so our trial weight here was 0.8 degrees oops A, tri a trial weight here was 0.8 degrees. Our original imbalance was a 2.9 mil. After we mounted the trial weight, it was, uh, or the the um, the imbalance of the trial weight is 6.75. Um, so this is where this formula in your book comes in. I literally snipped this picture right off out of the book. So our correction weight is equivalent to the trial weight size, which was 0.8, right? And that was just something that we calculated times our original imbalance, which is 2.9 over T, which is the length of that last, um, this last vector here, this guy. Okay, so when we 
punch that all in, we get a correction weight of um, 0.34 ounces. OK, so now we know how much of a weight and when we do the correction weight, we mount the correction weight at the same uh, radius diameter that we mounted the um, the trial weight. So if it was say we were balancing like an impeller or something like an overhung impeller, we probably would have mounted that trial weight somewhere around um, the inlet on on the outside, or maybe we mounted it right out in a very very outside kind of mark. So that's what gives us our um, measurement. We can we can do a little bit of calculation if we need to change that in ounce inches, and that was one of those. Um, calculations that I had you guys do um, a couple weeks back where you um, were doing like this kind of a thing where we were calculating like when you move it to the outside how much less or if you move it to the middle how much more so that measurement in ounce inches versus where where you place it so um, <clears throat> yeah we've calculated the correction weight we know it's 8.7 grams at the radius of the trial weight that we mounted it and our trial weight was at um, 180 degrees so the next step that we have to do is now we have to figure out if we mounted the trial weight at 180 degrees, we have to mount our trial weight. We have to measure this angle right here. Right, so in this case, this angle is very small. It's a very acute angle. Um, and so what you have to do for this is you actually have to grab a, um, a protractor. You know, like the little rainbow shaped angle finder. Um, a plate protractor, some some kind of measurement, and we actually have to go in and measure this angle with um, some kind of uh, of a measuring device. There is some uh, math that is called the um, I think it's called the cosine rule, where we can calculate this if we know the the lengths of these vectors. But I think it's just easier just for um, what we're doing, just to grab an actual ruler and measure it. So in this case. Um, I did the math for you. OK, in, in this case, this angle is 10 degrees. So the, the, the angle between our T and our O is 10 degrees. So what we do with that is we know how much of a, tr of a correction weight we need to add. And now we're seeing the angle at which this changes. So the next thing we have to do is we have to, and I'm going to quote this right from the book because this is where um, some of the, the mix up happens. Is um, it says. Place the correction weight at the angle determined and at the same approximate distance from the center of the trial weight was placed. Always install the correction weight in the opposite direction to which the O plus T vector um, moved from the original imbalance vector zero. OK, so what we have to do is we have to go in the opposite direction from the T plus O vector in which way that it moved. So in this case, um, we have to look at it. So our original, um, this was our um, original, and then we have our T plus O. And we have to look at this and say, it's, we have to add this weight 10 degrees from where we went to, where we mounted our trial weight. Our trial weight was mounted on this black line at 180 degrees, okay? So this was where we had that trial weight mounted. And we have to go 10 degrees off of that, but which direction do we go in here? Do we go this way or do we go this way? And this is where it gets a little bit, little bit tricky. So we always install the correction weight in the opposite direction to which the O and T vector moved from the original imbalance. Um, the original imbalance. So our T plus O ended up being at uh, 200 degrees down in this direction. And the location here, or sorry, this was our T plus O, the orange one is our T plus O. So we have to figure out which way that moved and the way that the direction that it moved is really whichever is the, sh the path of, of least, um, least um, travel. So if we're looking at our original imbalance, it was pointed at 10. 
And then our when we added our trial weight, our T plus O ended up at 200. So it went 170 degrees around this way, but it went a whole 190 degrees around this way, right? So we can say that it um, it moved in this direction. This is the direction that it went because if our if our T and O was out here, it would just say, yeah, well, it just went to here, but it didn't go there. It went all the way around to this bottom part here. OK, so we want to install the correction weight in the opposite direction to which the T and O vector moved from the original. So if it went this way, we want to mount our trial weight um, 10 degrees off the um, 180 where we mounted it. OK, so this is where um, I'm not sure where the, how this is going to pan out, but um, I've added a, a pull everywhere thing here, so I want you guys to drop a pin. If you go to your app and you guess, where would we put that balance weight? I see a couple on there. I think you can change it if you accidentally dropped it. So I'd like you guys to try to drop a pin on there where you think, what side of the line do you think that we need to drop this guy? Do we want to be on the 190? Do we want to be on the 70? Do we want to be at the zero? Where, where are we going to put this correction weight? Okay, it's 50-50 so far. Give you guys a few more seconds here. Probably didn't have the, the app up and ready. Looks like some people are just guessing. OK, so anyways, the answer to this is um, is whoever put these pins in here? Can I click on it? See who it was? I'm learning how this all works. So, anyways, uh, yeah. So, anyways, um, these these pins here on the 190. You're right. Okay. So it's a little bit of a of a um, I don't know, you, you translate translating a, 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 some instructions into it, but if the direction of rotation went around this way, OK, we, we came around counterclockwise from where we pound, mounted our, our trial weight, we want to mount it clockwise. So we want to go in the opposite direction from where we moved the trial weight. So if we went from our original was pointing at 10, our trial plus original pointed at 200 and we went this way. We mounted a trial weight at 180 degrees. We want to go in the opposite direction to that and then mount this weight here. OK, so that is um, where we would mount it. So we would mount our we would take off our trial weight and then we're going to mount and install the correction weight at the same radius. I think it was point uh, 3.4 ounces. Was that what it was? That seems high. Maybe I got that. Now. I thought it was 0.8 or something. Anyways, but that's where we're going to mount our correction weight is right on that on that point there. OK, right here. OK, so that's the kind of the walkthrough and that's what you guys are going to be doing in the shop a little bit. There's some challenges with the equipment, learning how to get it all set up, everything. That's where you guys are going to help each other out when we uh, when we get into the shop and, and do some of that that work with that. OK, so I'm going to. I got dropped out there for a second. Um, OK, so I'm going to go in um, Brightspace.